People are on the move today as never before, to work, to play, to shop. People are on the go in unprecedented numbers. While this massive movement of people is taking place in every community, it is most apparent and the subject of the greatest controversy in the densely populated urban areas. Delays in public transit become inevitable as buses and streetcars are caught up in the daily traffic jams, so familiar to the city way of life. Delays in service can lead to a reduction in ridership, which in turn reduces transit revenue and often results in a further reduction in the quality and frequency of public transit. To break this vicious circle, the Government of Ontario is providing dramatically increased financial and technical support to municipal transit systems. Studies have shown that people will rarely walk more than a thousand feet to use transit. A thousand feet along each side of a conventional bus route leaves most of the community without adequate access to the public transit system that the whole community pays for. For many, the elderly, the handicapped, or just people laden with parcels, this 1,000-foot barrier is not just a matter of convenience, but a very real physical constraint. Dial a bus, a concept pioneered by Go Transit in 1970, works by dividing a neighborhood into zones, each of which is served by a single small bus that will pick you up at your own front door. Bramley, Ontario is one of several Canadian communities that have adopted dial-a-bus transit systems. Good afternoon, Bramley Bus. May I help you? Good afternoon, Bramley Bus. May I help you? What was the address, please? 22 Finchley. And you're going to? How many passengers? People who phone the central dispatch office one hour before they wish to travel are picked up at their door by modern, brightly colored buses which fan out from the Bramalee city center every half hour. For a fare of 35 cents, passengers will be dropped off anywhere they wish within their zone or taken to the city center where they may transfer to another bus. Yes, would you please check on my two o'clock cycle? I have a pickup at 115 Folkestone Crescent. I'm in front of the house. There doesn't seem to be any sign of activity at all. Stand by 05. I shall call that number. On the two o'clock cycle? Yes, you call for a dial bus? No, she has Test to go right pick now. up. She's out there okay, now. She should be there any minute. I know. You're welcome. Bye bye. That party will be right down, sir. Thank you, 10-4. 10-4, over now. Bramley is a typical residential area with townhouse projects and apartment buildings. And the area really blends itself into a dial bus system as there's so many crescents and courts, cul-de-sacs, and areas that are hard to reach that a public or a fixed route system would not attract enough people. It's the housewife who's now able to get out and visit her friends or go shopping or really do what she wants and then get back home before the kids are home from school. The system uh, was uh, designed by a consulting firm in conjunction with the Ministry of Transportation and Communication. And uh, the ministry supplied 75% of the cost of the equipment and will pay 50% of the deficit. But with the success uh, of the system now, we might even get to a point where it's going to break even. In Ottawa, a new bilingual dial-a-bus service called Teletranspo has just begun, and expansion of the system is already planned.
In Stratford and in Kingston, dial-a-bus is used in the evening hours, providing more convenience to the passenger while saving the expense of operating large and often empty buses on fixed routes. Dial-a-bus has proven itself in low-density residential areas, but will it work in the larger urban centers? The GO Dial-a-Bus demonstration project in the northern part of metropolitan Toronto will try to answer this question. Operated for the province by the Toronto Transit Commission, North Metro will be the most ambitious dial-a-bus system yet tried. Vehicles will be computer dispatched to customers' homes and specially developed club car buses will be tested for comfort and durability. Service will be centered around neighborhood shopping centers, and passengers may also make connection with regular fixed route buses. A direct link with the York Mill subway station will also be provided. Yet another variation of dial-a-bus is being tried in a suburban area of Sudbury. Here, workers can make weekly reservations for a dial-a-bus, which will take them directly to the smelters at nearby Copper Cliff. Other buses provide express service between Copper Cliff and the residential areas of Sudbury. Bus schedules are coordinated with shift changes at Inco and for the first time provide convenient public transit designed to meet the special needs of shift workers. It is also possible to design a city to meet the needs of a transit system. This has been done in Nottingham, England. A portion of the downtown core has been set aside for pedestrians only. Specially marked buses bring shoppers and workers from satellite parking garages into the downtown area free of charge. This restriction of automobiles from the heart of the city is the subject of a vigorous controversy, but this is one method of retaining part of the city for people. In Stevenage, an English new town, they have taken yet another approach, a unique service called Superbus. We have a modern highway system which enables motorists to move very easily. Indeed, to make a journey across the town by car takes less than 10 minutes at any time of the day. Pedestrians and cyclists have their own independent routes. Against this attractive background, we found in the early 1970s a lot of public comment about the absence of a good public transport service. People wanted to travel down to the, the central area and onto the industrial area. And although the level of car ownership was approaching one per family, at any particular moment, most of the family didn't have access to the car. It wasn't the, the non-car owning families that were the problem, it was the car owning families that were feeling the problem. The um, service runs to a residential area three miles from the, the city centre, and it covers that uh, distance normally in nine minutes. 
and uh, an exact fare system means very rapid boarding. If you didn't have very rapid boarding, you could very easily upset this kind of very tight schedule. And the public have seen this, and they appreciate uh, perhaps more, more highly than anything else the reliability of the service. The public themselves chose the bright yellow and blue livery, which you'll see on the Superbus service. The special attention given to efficient service in Stevenage is reflected in other cities. Even the famous red London bus can be operated by one man and provide seats for many more passengers than an ordinary bus. Rush hours are a problem in all cities. Too many people traveling to work at the same time overburden the transit system and clog the roads. The solution to this problem is staggering. In October 1973, Premier William Davis announced a program of variable working hours for many of the civil servants employed at Queen's Park. The monitoring of this program will provide valuable information to other Ontario communities. In addition, municipal studies relating to staggered work hour programs will receive a 75% subsidy from the Government of Ontario. While subsidies are important, promotion and marketing at the local level must still be carried out to encourage the motorist to leave his car at home and use public transit. In Ontario, improved marketing techniques are having a marked effect on the ridership of many transit systems. In Oakville, a schedule that is integrated with the GO train, reduced off-peak fares, and brightly colored buses are all part of a marketing program aimed at increasing the number of people using the system. Sudbury also is using a new color scheme and logo to improve the image of its bus system. an imaginative program aimed at school children, and a win-a-trip contest encourages and promotes the use of the bus system. But advertising alone cannot attract new customers to a service. Scheduling must be improved, and new equipment designed to meet the growing need for modern transit vehicles must be developed. Already, significant advances in the control of exhaust emissions are being made. Tests have shown that a well-tuned bus capable of carrying perhaps 80 people emits less pollution than some cars which often carry only one person. Further improvements to the comfort level of passengers and economy of operation are possible. For instance, articulated buses, buses that are hinged in the center, are being used in many European cities today. These vehicles provide more seating for the paying public without increasing the number of drivers or buses in the streets. Electric trolley buses can provide quiet, reliable service without contributing directly to air pollution. But trolley buses do depend on overhead wires that limit the area they can serve. New buses are being designed that will change this situation using one of man's oldest machines. The potter's wheel is an energy storage device, much like a battery, except that it stores energy in a large rotating disc or flywheel. The energy the potter puts into the flywheel is sufficient to keep the work table turning smoothly for several minutes while the clay is shaped. Similarly, advanced flywheel designs rotating at up to 25,000 RPM can be used to store far more energy than an equivalent weight of batteries. Not much bigger than a potter's wheel, these units can generate enough electricity to propel a conventional trolley bus up to six miles away from overhead wires. 
Even the streetcar, the grand old lady of public transit, is now being rediscovered as an efficient means of moving people. Toronto is the only city in Canada still using the streetcar, and new ones are now needed. Recently, other Canadian cities have also indicated a high level of interest in this mode of public transit. Streetcars are the backbone of the transit system in many European cities. Articulated streetcars with seats for 80 or more passengers are used in many municipalities. These long, one-man operated trams are possible because of a unique fare collecting system that puts passengers on their honor. Tickets purchased from conveniently located dispensers are machine validated on the vehicle. Fares are for a specified length of time rather than distance and there is no need to use transfers. Periodic spot checks ensure that all riders have a valid ticket. Using this system, any or all doors can be used for entry, thus clearing the stops quickly. The driver no longer has to sell tickets or issue transfers, making the system safer and more convenient for both the user and the operator. In Rotterdam, the streetcars operate on exclusive rights of way. Light rail transit systems of this type can be operated at ground level and on guideways, rising above rivers and intersecting traffic. An advanced form of rapid transit called Go Urban is being developed at provincial expense. It too will operate on an elevated guideway, but it will be quieter and less intrusive than other elevated systems. Magnetic forces will both support and propel the cars without moving parts or physical contact with the track. Go Urban will be integrated with all other forms of urban transportation and will utilize available land without the need for expropriation. Once Go Urban is fully proven at the test demonstration track, now under construction at Exhibition Park, Toronto, Ontario will pay 75% of the cost of installing the system in the major cities of the province. Similar support will be given to other modes of transit. The Government of Ontario has committed itself to a policy of developing an integrated transportation system for the movement of people and goods in the province. At the same time, it has recognized the need for community-wide transit systems that will provide maximum service and convenience and will not depreciate or disrupt community life. Go A New Way Ontario is a program to put people first and keep people on the go.